two, two little ones. So we're now on the system dynamics portion of this course. So we're switching gears uh, somewhat significantly in the sense that we're, we're going from a sort of electronics EE perspective to a more general dynamic systems perspective, okay? And uh, in today's couple lectures that I'm going to talk about mostly is w why we do that um, and what that kind of means and what that, like some of the foundation uh, uh, of that way of thinking. So um, I think that your, uh, what you learned in the electronics portion, uh, we're going to we're going to build up a system that contains that type of analysis that we did, uh, but extends it further. Um, so we're going to start to integrate uh, mechanical systems in under the same sort of analytic process that we use. It was very similar to the one we used for electronic systems. And we're going to uh, uh, be able to unify them in electromechanical systems. And the next semester, we'll be able to incorporate uh, fluid systems as well and thermal systems as well. Um, so really fun stuff ahead. Um, so lecture 1-1 one, one is the systems approach. So Cy Ramo and Richard Booten Jr., which is just a badass name, uh, the folks who brought us the Intercontinental, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, ICBM, um, and I make them a little joke here, thanks, I mean thanks, but thanks, uh, uh, define systems engineering to be the design of the whole as distinguished from the design of the parts. So they're coming online, uh, uh, they're, they're some of the first engineers to really think about engineering at a systematic uh, uh, level. Um, like the ICBM, many modern technologies require the systems engineering design approach. You can't just um, think in terms of parts anymore. Um, you can't think of in terms of uh, really small, simple so systems that are obviously connected in certain ways to each other. Uh, there, ha there are uh, 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 very complicated interactions that happen when you have um, large systems with a lot of moving parts in them. So a key aspect of systems engineering design process, of a systems engineering design process, is the mathematical modeling of the system. Most systems of interest to mechanical engineers are dynamic systems, those that change with time. Enter the time derivative and differential equations. So this is what, you know, we've already been doing that, right? So circuits are dynamic systems. And we're going to incorporate other types of dynamic systems under the same uh, uh, type of analysis. Dynamic systems exhibit behavior that can be characterized through analysis and called the system's properties. A property of a dynamic system might be how long it takes for it to respond to a given input or which types of inputs would cause a damaging response. Clearly, such properties are of significant interest to the design process. We uh, want to be able to characterize a system's properties. Um, and a lot of these come from how they respond to dynamic inputs, changing inputs, and how the system dynamically responds to those. System dynamics is the study and practice of dynamic system analysis and design. We primarily focus on analysis at first, since it is a prereq for design. One cannot make a thing do what one wants without first understanding how the thing works. So that's why we begin with analysis. Um, uh, analysis, it, you're going to hear it discussed a lot. Um, uh, so there's like this, this uh, there's this uh, way of splitting up engineering into two, two different sides. So on one side there's analysis and then on the other side there's design or synthesis, people sometimes call it. So um, they, are, they are sort of important uh, uh, two sort of poles to keep in mind that they're different. Um, but 
uh, I think that when we do that, sometimes people get the idea that that uh, you could do design without analysis. It's totally separate. But uh, actually, design uh, requires analysis. You can do analysis without design, but you can't do design without analysis. Um, or Maybe I'll qualify that by saying, you can't do good design without analysis. Uh, uh, you're just sort of, at that point, you're just sitting there wondering <laughs> if things might work. Uh, so you have to have analysis. So this course focuses on electromechanical systems, systems with an interface between electronics and mechanical subsystems. They, uh, these are ubiquitous. Manufacturing plants, power plants, vehicles, robots, consumer products, anything with a motor, all include electromechanical systems. In the next course, uh, the, the System Dynamics and Control course, uh, we'll consider more types of systems, for example, fluid and thermal systems and their interactions. So I want you to, to recognize that this is actually, although we're going to focus on electromechanical systems in this course, these same principles can be applied and, and have been applied, and there are lots of books you can read about different types of systems you can apply these same principles to. Um, a, a popular one to see uh, in um, math classes. They, I don't know why math classes really like this one specific field, but uh, we don't talk about them as much in, in engineering, in mechanical engineering, but uh, population dynamics uh, can be described with the same exact uh, uh, processes. So the same analytic techniques that you learn here can be used in population dynamic modeling. So probably in your differential equations class, you guys did some sort of like, um, uh, uh, oh, what is it called? Like the prey predator model, yeah. Does that sound familiar? Um, where you've got like a dynamic system that you can write. Di a, a differential equations, couple differential equations that describe uh, uh, the dynamics of of a population model. So the same the same stuff can be applied to that too, um, which is kind of cool. Which. <laughs> If you want to be, uh, I, I guess there are two ways you can go with this. Um, you can sort of take this to be a sign that like there's some like grand unifying thing underlying the way things work. That's one way you can go. Uh, or you can be cynical and say there's just one way we know how to describe stuff. <laughs> That's why everything looks the same when we analyze it. I don't know. Uh, there's probably some truth to both of those. Um, uh, okay, so. Cool. Electromechanical systems uh, analysis can proceed with initially separate modeling of the electronic and mechanical subsystems. Then, through an unholy union, combining their equations and attempting a solution. This is fine for simple systems. However, many systems will require a systematic approach. So that's something. I, so I'm saying is, you guys already know how to analyze mechanical systems. You guys did that in your dynamics class, right? Um, so you guys know how to write down Newton's laws for some sort of mechanical system, come up and F equals MA is a differential equation, right? I think we talked about that early on in this class. Um, F equals MA is a differential equation. So you have a differential equation you write down for that, and maybe the torque equation too, rotational uh, uh, second law. And then uh, you can combine that with your KVL, KCL, elemental equations from your, from your uh, circuit and the interaction equations you can write down and you can try to combine those all into a big system and solve it. You can do this. This is something that you can do. And sometimes that is totally the right approach. Um, but when systems get more complicated, it gets harder and harder to do that uh, uh, in, a, in an ad hoc way. Um, you have to become more systematic the more complex your system gets. So, uh, 
we're going to use a systematic approach because we want to be able to, we want our techniques to scale up to large systems and complicated systems because that's uh, uh, kind of like what's the most interesting nowadays is the more complicated systems um, typically. Uh, we adopt a systematic approach that draws graphs, a la graph theory. Um, so now when you guys are, you know, at the club on the weekends, trying to be cool, you can talk about how, you know, you just do graph theory at school and stuff. Sounds really cool and impressive. Sorry? Good icebreaker. It's a good icebreaker, yeah. Um, I'm really well adjusted. I do graph theory at school, yes. Um, uh, <laughs> so, uh, this systematic approach draws graphs for electronic and mechanical systems that are intentionally analogous to electronic circuit diagrams. So we're going to draw these graphs and they're going to look like, so you guys have probably seen those like social media uh, uh, graphs where you have all these nodes and then you have all these, they're called edges, but all these edges coming off of the nodes and they're interconnected um, like this, the social media ones where it's like how like well, something spreads through social media and then like, those, those interactive infographics where you like hover over stuff and things move. Those are graphs from graph theory. So that's, we're going to draw things that look like that, but they're going to describe these dynamic systems and specifically, we're, so we're going we're gonna to start out um, thinking of mechanical systems and electronic systems in this way separately and then you can actually unite them. Uh, but we're going to do this in such a way that these, these nodes from the graph theory graphs are going to be nodes like in a circuit, like the circuit nodes, okay? And then these, these links among them, these edges in the graph, are going to be uh, 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 the elements. So like one will be a resistor, one will be a capacitor, etc. So... Uh, and then all of the stuff that we've learned from like KVL, KCL, all that will apply to these graphs. It turns out you can draw graphs for electronic systems, for circuits. You can do it for mechanical systems too. And then, then once you've got that going on, you can get them both together pretty easily. So that's our, that's our approach here. Uh, yes. So this allows us to use a single graphical diagram to express a system's composition and interconnections. Virtually every technique from electronic circuit analysis can be applied to these representations. Elemental equations will still apply. Kirchhoff's laws will still apply. Impedance methods will still apply. And they'll be, they'll be generalized to apply to more than just electronic systems. So that's sort of in broad outline where we're headed. Okay. Any questions? <laughs>